and those that look out of the windows be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the streets. When the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the sound of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is hot, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. I uh, thank you. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Got your mother and her wildernesses. Not sure if you're a boy or a girl. Okay. Poetry, okay. The name is Bruce Ramsey, and I'm reading powerful pieces from Dylan Thomas, King Solomon, and the guy we aren't, we are not very familiar with, familiar with, Mr. William Shakespeare. I chose them to do my poetry readings from because, I, ch I chose them to do my poetry readings from because they seem to know so much about life and all the great meaning that goes along with life, that goes with life. But sometimes life seems very absurd and meaningless to us, and I found the small poetic piece from Shakespeare's Macbeth to be full of deep meaning when I'm feeling lousy. This piece comes from the last part of the play when Macbeth has just learned that his evil, crazy wife has just died, and this is what he has to say about life. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, creeps in this last key, creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle, life is but a walking shadow. The poor player that struts and fronts his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. He struts and fronts his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying Nothing signifying nothing. Oh well, Dylan Thomas, a Welsh poet who had a short but kind of glorious life, was an existentialist who had the constant hum of the existential angst in him. Or so I have learned. To keep his mind off of life, he became a womanizer and alcoholic. The death of his dad made him feel old and compelled him to write this poem about the fate of life. It's called, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night. 
so depressing is this poem that I will try to cheer it up with a funny accent. Do not, dear gentle, into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men know that dark is bright, because their words had bought no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright. Their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay. Fray, fray, against the dying of the light. Wild men, who caught and sang the sudden flight, and learned too late. They grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death, who see with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on that sad height, yes, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Pray, pray against the dying of the light. <sighs> My last piece is from Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament of the Bible, written by King Solomon over 3,000 years ago. Solomon was known as the wisest king of Israel, not to mention the richest, and, was not to, and he experienced all the pleasures that any, man, any normal man would practically give his soul for. But he too saw life to be very meaningless and cruel, and that all he does, and that all we desire, and do, is all vanity and vexation of spirit. What kept him from keep talking? What what kept him from taking the big dive, though, was the belief in God and the possibility of an afterlife. This is what he has to say about the close of one's life. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the, e nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun nor the light, or the moon nor the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few. And those that look out of the windows be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the streets. And when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the sound of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home. And the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, 
and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. Vanity, vanity. Oh, is vanity. I thank you. <laughs> Oh, it is vanity. <laughs> the man shall go to his long home. Vanity, vanity, all oh, is vanity, saith the preacher.